Hi, I'm Mark Yaxley for Strategic Wealth Preservation. Today we're talking about shipping precious metals. You might remember in the last episode of Inside the Vault, we were talking about carrying your precious metals into foreign countries. Well, of course, you can't always do that. Sometimes it's more practical to ship the metal, whether it be something of this size or a large shipment of precious metals. We're going to tell you how that works from start to finish. So let's get started. When it comes to shipping precious metals, you have several options to consider. First of all, how am I going to ship it? When you have a smaller amount of precious metals, I would say anything under $50,000, you can consider a common carrier like USPS, FedEx, or UPS. Right here we have an example of a UPS package that came in. We're going to open this thing up later and show you some of the best practices for shipping. But really that's a question of value. Once you get over that $50,000 threshold, or simply the volume of metal that you're shipping. For example, if you have a large amount of silver or a fair amount of gold, you're gonna to wanna to consider an armored car service, which we'll talk about in a second. So if you have a relatively small amount of precious metals that you're shipping, we are gonna be able to do it in a box or several boxes like this through USPS, UPS, or FedEx. The thing to remember is whenever you ship precious metals, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have insurance as well. So whoever you do decide to work with, if you're gonna do it independently or through a service provider like SWP, for example, you wanna make sure that the package is fully insured. So here's a few guidelines for smaller package shipments. You generally won't wanna go above $50,000 in value or whatever threshold your insurance provider is allowing per package or per shipment in general. Another good guideline is don't pack more than 500 ounces of weight in any one box. If you have a shipment of 1,000 ounces, for example, you're gonna to wanna to break that into two boxes because if you have too much weight in a box, it starts moving around, the box can get damaged, and then you might have a problem with your metal actually making it all the way to the destination. If you're working with a shipment of $50,000 or more in value, you may wanna to start to consider armored car services. An example of an armored car company would be either Brinks or Loomis International. These companies specialize in the transportation of high value items. So in that case, the material is gonna to have to be picked up at either a business or at a financial institution, for example, a bank. If you have a good uh, understanding with your local bank branch manager, they may allow you to have your precious metals picked up there, or generally speaking, like I said, from a business. Again, these are for larger shipments, for example, large amounts of silver or high value amounts of gold. You can find out more about these services by contacting Brinks directly or Loomis International directly, or you can come to a third-party service provider like SWP and we'll happily fill you in on how it works. As far as documentation, there's two things to remember. Number one, always include documentation with your shipments. At a bare minimum, you're gonna to wanna to have a packing slip of what is inside the box safely stowed inside of the, the packages. And we'll see an example of that when we open this box up later. You're also gonna be required to provide some sort of packing slip or evidence of what's inside on the outside of the box as well, generally speaking with FedEx or USPS or UPS. When you're shipping internationally, you're also gonna be required to provide a commercial invoice. If you've never completed a commercial invoice before, I highly recommend you speak directly with a service provider for a little bit of guidance there. Commercial invoices are required for the export of precious metals from the country you're shipping it out of and the import into the country you're shipping into. Most importantly is how you package up your goods, especially when you're shipping with UPS, FedEx, or USPS, common carriers. Keeping in mind that these companies, although they're reputable and they ship things all over the world, don't always take the best care of your packages when they're in transit. So what we're gonna do today is take an actual UPS package that was delivered to us recently at the vault, and we're gonna take this apart, we're gonna do a little bit of a product unveiling for you, but at the same time, I'm gonna point out all the best practices that went into putting this package together that made sure that it arrived here safely in the Cayman Islands. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that there's proper documentation on the outside of the package. So what I have here in my hands is a copy of a commercial invoice and beyond that, 
is a packing slip of what's supposed to be inside the package. So I'm gonna make sure that when I open this package under CCTV camera, that I'm comparing the goods to the packing slip. Next thing I notice about this box is it's very sturdy. They're not using cheap cardboard. They're, I know it sounds funny, but they're actually using high quality boxing. And it, it's quite steady, quite firm in my hands. That's something you're gonna to wanna to look for. When we open this up, you're also gonna notice that everything is gonna be double boxed. This is probably the most important thing to remember is you don't just use one box, you use a box inside a box. That extra layer of corrugation is what the insurers want you to ship with. They wanna make sure that the, when the coins or the bars are moving around a little bit in transit, they're not banging out the corners of the boxes and something is spilling out the sides. Or worse yet, you don't have a FedEx or UPS employee that's trying to open the box with an X-Acto knife and slipping a coin out of the corner. When the package arrives to us here, the first thing that we're gonna do after we've taken the paperwork out is we're gonna inspect the package visually to make sure there haven't been any tamperings or any areas where something could have leaked out. So we're gonna do just a quick visual check of the box itself. This box looks like it's arrived intact. Had we noticed that there was some leakage or some tampering, before we even opened it, we would have contacted FedEx or UPS to advise them that we thought there was a problem with the package. Next thing we're gonna do is obviously cut it open, being very carefully not to cut ourselves. Because it's double box, it's quite thick. So there's quite a bit of resistance with the package. So that's the outer box that we were speaking about. Then they've got some filler, like most shipments. What they're trying to do there is avoid the material moving around in transit, especially when you're shipping internationally. These things are going on airplanes. There's hundreds of them being shipped at a time. So they're not taking any particular care only because this is a package that contains precious metals. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a second copy of the packing slip here. So again, if the exterior packing slip were to get lost, then there's a second record inside the box. So we can refer to that as well. This might get a little bit heavy, bear with me. I'm actually gonna flip it over here. There we go. So there's our inner box. Okay, some interesting stuff in here. So you notice it's really well packed actually. They've got some tubes sealed with security tape on it. Nice and tight, the coins are moving a little bit. That's not a big deal because it was in a double box situation because it's in a tube, no issues there. So we'll take those out. They've got some bars. They've taken the time to bubble wrap each bar independently. So the casing, these are Pam Swiss bars in a plastic case. Those cases are not gonna get broken in transit. These are 10 ounce bars. <clears throat> Just gonna take those out under the camera. And then the rest of the box, we're gonna go through it anyways. Even though I've already done a quick count in my mind to match up with the packing slip, I wanna make sure there's nothing else in the box. I didn't miss a coin somewhere and move that down. And then we can open up each one just to make sure that it's the product that we expected to receive. So now we're comparing to our packing slip. I was expecting to receive 20 coins, 20 gold coins, which I'll open up in a second, and five gold bars. So at a quick count, I've got the goods that I need. I'm gonna do the rest under CCTV camera, and then we're gonna check that into the vault. In summary, best practices when shipping precious metals. One, always double box the material. Remember, box inside box. Always bubble wrap whenever you can or use tubes to seal up the coins, make sure they're not rattling around, moving around too much. Um, always have your correct paperwork. If you're not sure how to complete your paperwork, speak to a precious metals dealer or give FedEx or UPS a call, of course. I hope that we've answered a lot of your questions today about shipping precious metals. Of course, if you have any outstanding questions, contact us at SWP, that's info at swpkman.com, or you can tweet me. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you for the next episode of Inside the Vault. Thanks a lot.